Hi, dear Toastmasters, guests, and friends. Welcome to the world's biggest platform to hone your leadership skills and communication skills. Toastmasters. Toastmasters where leaders are made. Not just leaders, confident leaders. Not just speakers, confident speakers. On our talk show, we have one such confident leader. The regional advisor for Region 9. A Toastmaster that a lot of district leaders can call a friend. A Toastmaster that really encourages us to do something very different. A Toastmaster who unblocks us when we have issues. A true friend of District 31. Without any further ado, let me call upon our Region 9 advisor, Toastmaster Patricia, onto our talk show. Toastmaster Patricia, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you, Vera, and thank you for that lovely introduction. I hope I have been a good friend to the district leaders in Region 9. As I said earlier, this is a bittersweet day for me because it's the last day of my two-year stint as Region 9 advisor. So I'm going to miss all of you, but I will be watching from a distance and I will be seeing the progress that you're all making as I look at the dashboard every week. We'll try to make you proud, Christmas, Patricia, and it was a pleasure working with you. I personally will miss you working on a monthly basis, but I'm always sure you are an email away, so I will always keep that in mind. Christmas, Patricia, I ask all my guests this one question, the Toastmasters journey. Where did it start? How did it start? Would you like to share about that? Well, Vera, my Toastmasters journey started one winter when I did a six-week public speaking course. And at the end of the course, someone asked, "How, where could we go that would help us to continue developing our public speaking skills? And the presenter recommended Toastmasters. Well, I found out where my nearest Toastmasters club was. And I joined up and I've been there ever since. And that was 21 years ago. But why would I stay with the club or why did I stay with Toastmasters? Well, the club I joined, as I learned later, was a quality club. It had committee members who were dedicated to keeping the club vibrant. It had a very effective evaluations. It was very encouraging that every member should follow the educational program. And I think what mostly persuaded me to stay was that the members were welcoming and friendly. I was co-opted onto the committee very early in my club membership, and I took on various roles. But after I was club president, I then went on to be area director and division director. And it was when I was division director that I experienced the famous, or perhaps I should say infamous, tap on the shoulder. I had just completed my first division contest and the district director approached me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, Patricia, have you ever thought of going into district leadership? And I have to say that my reply was quite direct and quite short. No, I had not. A couple of months later, the incoming district director persuaded me to come along as the district secretary for her year as district director. I fell in love with district leadership right from the start. I mean, can you believe that I actually loved researching the governing documents and I loved everything that I learned about preparation for district council meetings, about credentials and about parliamentary procedure. It was, of course, then just a hop, skip, and a jump, and one or two elections to become public relations manager, then club growth director, then program quality director, and of course, district director. And here I am today, as just coming to the end of my second year as a region advisor in Region 9. And this is a role where I have learned a lot about myself. But I've also learned a lot about the districts in Region 9. And I've learned that joining Toastmasters 21 years ago 
was one of the best decisions that I have ever made in my life. Vera. Amazing journey, Toastmasters Patricia. 21 years with Toastmasters and we have a remarkable leader in you. Thank you for sharing that. I cannot even tell what the experience is like a RA region manager, but it sounds very similar to an area director where you have a couple of clubs, but at a different level, at a different magnitude, solving different mm -hmm. problems. But thank you for all the help. Toastmasters Patricia, moving to our second segment, is the impact of Toastmasters on your personal life, professional life, social life, spiritual life? You talked about that a little, but is there any other example that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I recently came back from a holiday and I came back to face absolute chaos in my office. And I was immediately reminded of the opening lines of Rudyard Kipling's poem, If, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. I've always had the ability to remain calm under pressure, but Toastmasters, and especially I think leadership in Toastmasters has made me stronger at focusing on what I have to do while there is mayhem going on around me. At a club level, I learned that preparation is key. Preparation for your speeches, preparation for your role as Toastmaster or any other role at that meeting. As a district leader and as a region advisor, I learned the value of prioritizing tasks so that I can have a, a balance between my working life, my personal life and my Toastmasters life because that was very important to me. I also learned to break down tasks into smaller uh, sections, smaller blocks. It's easier to work on it block by block and then get to complete the entire task. And of course, these are all soft skills or we call them transferable skills that have helped me to be a better, be a more effective and more efficient worker in my workplace. And also, I hope, a more effective and effect efficient leader in Toastmasters. Now, interesting, you should ask about the impact on the social life, because when I went to that public speaking course 21 years ago, I did it for a reason. And the reason was that while I was comfortable with having a conversation with another person, such as you, Vera, today, I was very uncomfortable when I was within a group, even within a group of friends. And I would always retire into my shell and I would never contribute to the conversation in any way. Today, thankfully, Toastmasters has worked its magic and now I will, in a group, contribute to the conversation. I even tell anecdotes, I even relate stories and I will offer an opinion. But sometimes I am also comfortable to just sit quietly and listen to the conversation going on around me. I also find it interesting that you would ask about Toastmasters impacting on your spiritual life. I certainly had never considered that before. But recently I read somewhere, and I cannot remember where it was, but I read somewhere that listening is a form of spiritual hospitality. And I was struck by that because I thought it just is a wonderful description of the art of listening. You know, listening as a form of spiritual hospitality. Now, I've always been a good listener. At least I like to think I have. But as a Toastmasters leader, I strive to be an even better listener because I think that you do build up that almost spiritual connection when you're sitting listening to somebody and listening correctly and to what they have to say. And Toastmasters also has taught me to be more reflective because of course, it's all about reflection these days. And we all reflect on our paths that we have completed. I like to reflect on my working life. I like to reflect, reflect on my Toastmasters life. I will reflect on my two years as a region advisor. And in many ways, reflection is also a form of spiritual growth. 
So I suppose in that way, Toastmasters has impacted on me in a spiritual way, as well as my social, personal and my working life. Fair. What an effective impact Toastmasters has created on your personal life, professional life and spiritual life. Toastmasters, Patricia, thank you for sharing on each segment. It was really great to hear the impact of Toastmasters. Now, moving to our third segment, Toastmasters, Patricia, is a call for Toastmasters for the guests watching our talk show. What would you say two reasons that they should consider Toastmasters in your personal view? Okay, so I'm going to answer that question first by saying that as I reflect, and we've just been talking about reflection, as I reflect on my life, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't find out about Toastmasters earlier in my life and at a younger age. I think it would have, I would have benefited so much from it. So to any non-Toastmaster who might be listening to this, find out where your nearest Toastmasters club is and join it. You will never, ever regret it. But I'm also going to go down the classic route now and give you three reasons why you should join Toastmasters. One, confidence. If you think that you lack the confidence to stand up and speak in public, then Toastmasters is the place for you to be. It took me seven months to pluck up the courage to do my icebreaker, the icebreaker being the first speech that we do in Toastmasters. And on that night, I remember clearly walking up to the front of the room, standing at the lectern, or you may call it a podium. And I remember walking back down to my seat with thunderous applause roaring in my ears. But I have no recollection of actually delivering the speech. And that was because I was simply racked with nerves. I had been almost sick the whole day. I was so uptight about having to deliver, deliver that speech. But again, Toastmasters has worked its magic on me. And I have learned through attending the meetings at my Toastmasters club, I have learned how to control those nerves. But even if you are already a confident speaker, Toastmasters is still a good place to be because it gives you the opportunity to practice your public speaking skills in a supportive and friendly environment, meeting after meeting. And this is the key thing about Toastmasters. It's not simply a six week course and then it's forgotten about. It's the constant practice and it's that constant practice that builds your confidence. Two, communication. Toastmasters will make you a better communicator. The famous Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw said that the, one of the biggest problems with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And we're all guilty of it. And in Toastmasters, we will learn how to communicate more clearly, more concisely, and more effectively. Becoming a better communicator will enhance your work presentations. And Ralph C. Smedley, who is the founder of Toastmasters International, he said people will listen to the person who has a message and who delivers that message effectively. So my advice is learn how to be the person that has that message and deliver that message effectively and you will go far in life. And three, leadership. In Toastmasters, you will have the opportunity to learn about leadership and to develop leadership skills that are transferable skills into your working life and into your personal life. Skills such as how to delegate, how to empower others, how to be a more effective communicator and listener. And you will also learn one that I particularly prize, and that is how to be empathetic. For me, empathy is probably up in the top five of leadership skills that every leader should have. So come to Toastmasters to improve your confidence, improve your communication style, and 
learn to be a leader. Vera. Amazing Toastmasters, Patricia. I was inspired to again join Toastmasters, listening the way you put the leaders' names and quoted them. I was truly inspired. And there's something in the way you present is so inspiring and you're to the point. Beautifully said. I am so inspired that I'm doing this interview with you, Toastmasters, Patricia. Moving to our fourth segment, Toastmasters, Patricia, this is called a rapid fire round. Are you ready for some fun? Mm -hmm. Christmas is Patricia, a historic leader that inspires you a lot. Okay, so given that I'm living on the other side of the Atlantic to where this is probably going to be aired, I think I will... I think I will mention... I th Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because she was the U.S. Supreme Court Justice, and she was only the second woman to be appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. And of course, she advocated for equality for women and for women's rights. And I think that she is somebody who would inspire me uh, on this side of the Atlantic, on your side of the Atlantic, for sure. She has inspired generations of women to break down those barriers and to, she has helped to pass several laws in an effort to achieve gender equality. And in some ways, she probably continues where what Eleanor Roosevelt started many years ago, because she also championed human rights, women's rights, and children's rights. But on my side of the Atlantic, I would mention Emmeline Pankhurst. So she was the leader of the suffragette movement. And she was instrumental in women being given the vote. Now, you may not agree with all of her methods, and I know not everybody does, but her, she and her fellow suffragettes were imprisoned. They were had to suffer the indignities of being force-fed. And I just feel that they did a, went through a lot of suffering so that I could have the right to vote and so that my granddaughters will have that right to vote in the future. They would be my two. Amazing choices, Toastmaster. Patricia, you've introduced us to new leaders that we may not be aware of. Thank you for sharing that. A historic speech that is very close to your heart but inspires you to give your speeches, any speech that comes to mind? Well, this time I'm probably going to go down the, the track that everybody else takes because I think it's hard to pass Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. As a Toastmaster, I think this speech just sings to you. It is, you know, I stood in Washington in the place where Martin Luther King Jr. delivered that speech. And it is so powerful, so emotive, so passionate. And the rapid repetition of I have a dream is so effective. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. It is such a strong speech. Uh, because I'm a woman, I also like to reference other women. And I'm going to mention Hillary Clinton's speech that she gave at the United Nations uh, uh, Conference for Women, which was held in Beijing back, I think, in 1995. And in that speech, she said that human rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights. And again, it's another powerful message. And they would be my suggestions for speeches that stand out for me. Thank you for sharing the speakers and the speech, and more importantly, a quote from their speech. I've never had a guest come and repeat a quote, and it is so beautiful to hear those words, just Master Patricia. Now, your personal speech when you return it, when you delivered it, when you got the feedback, you said, I did a fabulous job. Any speech that comes to mind? <laughs> oh dear, what a difficult question. There have been so many speeches, and but they haven't all been great speeches. 
Okay, so one maybe because only because a Toastmaster that I have great respect for, who unfortunately now has passed, um, always said that she thought it was my best speech. And it was based on a true story. So it was, I don't remember the name of it, or I think maybe it was called The Road of Bones. So it referred to a road in, in Russia uh, where many years ago, where, of course, the the um, prisoners in the camps went and they were building this road in all sorts of weather and with very, really hardly any tools to work with. Um, but I did it as a story where a, a son is asking his father about his granddad and the father is relating the story of this particular road. And it's harrowing in its telling um, because he then says to the son, I'm going to bring you up here. It's in Siberia to show you where your grandfather lies, because obviously, of course, when they suffered such hardship and in the extremes of weather, these prisoners just often died in the process of the work that they were doing, and they were simply left there. And that's why it's called the Road of Bones, because it forms part of the road surface or the underpart of the road surface. And it always struck me at the time when I saw a program on this on television. Uh, but I just, and that's how I developed the speech because the father was going to bring the, the son up to it to see where his grandfather lay. And uh, yes, and, and as I said, I don't know if it was a great speech or not, but certainly there was a Toastmaster who thought it was a very good speech. Absolutely. I mean, as you're hearing the the humanity in that story, it is so touching when a father takes his son to his grandfather's grave. I think that, that speaks a lot. And thank you for sharing that powerful story, Toastmaster Patricia. Knowing that you've read every single word in our governing council and our rules of Toastmasters, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you're a voracious reader. A book recommendation to District 31 from your collection. Oh, you know, Vera, this is like asking me to choose my favorite child. I mean, it's an impossibility. And often the favorite book is the one you are reading at the time. But, you know, yeah. I am going to go back to one that I reread from time to time. And it is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And, yes. you know, many people have read this book. And I think it's a book that everyone should read and certainly young people should all read it. And of course, it's a book that deals with prejudice, it deals with racial conflict, it deals with that young child because it's told through her eyes, she's the narrator, it deals through her living through um, three years of what was going on when her father was um, a lawyer representing um, the, the, the person who had been wrong. So it was all about racism, as I said. And it was her growing up. It was her learning that going from, from seeing everybody as good to realizing that not everybody is good and there is evil in the world and there are some bad people in the world. And a quote from that, although I'm not actually going to quote, it's going to be a paraphrasing this time, is something that I use often because it is that whole thing of empathy. And it's where the very wise parent Atticus says to his daughter that you never really understand a person until you consider things from that person's point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. And that is empathy. It's getting inside someone's skin and it's trying to find out what is it that makes that person tick, as in T-I-C-K. And you're trying to see the world from their perspective. So I love the book for the, that particular message that it gives. However, however, I am going to be shameless. And I'm going to also mention, oh, you can't see, the leadership bus by past international president, Ted Corcoran, which every leader should be reading. It's a slim book, easy to read, very easy to understand but gives great tips on being a leader. And also for any incoming club growth director, and oh dear, Vera, I think you are an incoming club growth director. We have past international president, Pat Johnson's Handbook for Building and Sustaining Vibrant Toastmasters Programs in Corporations. Both books highly recommended by me. 
amazing. Thank you for sharing such powerful books, Susan as a Patricia. And your memory is something which I definitely want to have. The paraphrasing of a content from The Mockingbird is unbelievable. Thank you for sharing that. A food that you'd like to recommend to our audience that is very close to your palate. Oh, well, this one is an easy one for me, Vera, because, and this is pure nostalgia, really. This is Irish brown bread. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Irish brown bread doesn't contain yeast, so you don't have to prove the dough. Mm-hmm. It is a soda bread, and it's nostalgic because it is the bread that my mom always made. And I have so many happy memories of Saturdays in my home when my mom would bake the brown bread and she would take it out of the oven, wrap it in a tea towel. She would open the kitchen window and she would place it at the kitchen, the open window, so that it would cool. And then we would sit down to tea as a family together. And that brown bread would be on the table with good Irish butter. I make the brown bread myself, but nowhere near as well as what my mom made it. So for me, Irish brown bread is my favorite food, but it's also that nostalgic memory of not just my mom, but my home as a child and my siblings and my father all sitting around a table. What else, what better way can you celebrate sitting around a table together, eating something as simple as Irish brown bread and Irish butter? So beautifully narrated the whole experience. I can pictureize everything as we're talking. And I think that's the beauty of a powerful speaker. Toastmaster, Patricia, a restaurant that you like to go with friends and family to have a good time. Any restaurant that comes to mind? Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Well, I, yes, let me think about that for two seconds. So a, a restaurant that I like to go to, well, I, yeah, I like... I like, you see, these restaurants would probably be in Dublin City, so you're not necessarily going to know what restaurants I'm talking about. But we have very good restaurants these days in Dublin City. And I like a restaurant which has nice ambience, which has food that I like. So I'm very partial to Italian food. I like my pastas, um, but also good company. And so I would think of restaurants such as... Um, the Trocadero, which I think may be gone at this stage, um, Le Crivan, uh, there's the Dylan Murphy restaurant. So there are many restaurants. And, you know, in, in Dublin City itself, you're, if you come to Dublin, you'll never be stuck for a restaurant to go to and for one of good quality, catering for all food types. Thank you for sharing that, Christmas, Patricia. With that, we wrap up our rapid fire round. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our District 31? Oh, I would like to thank the Fab Four for the last two years um, of my life as a regional advisor and how they uh, connected with me. And I would like to say, wish the Fab Four, the current Fab Four, all the best, particularly, obviously, Audrey, as she moves into the role of immediate past district director. But then I also want to wish the incoming Fab Four, because I know that you're going to rock as much next year as you have done this year. And I want to wish all of you the very best for next year and Vera particularly to wish you the best in the club growth role. It is a great role. I loved it when I did it. And I know that you're going to be very successful in that role. So thank you. Thank you, Tosmas Patricia. You could have been anywhere in the world. You choose to come and talk to us. So thank you from the bottom of me. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Dear Toastmasters, if you would like to come and talk to us, please do mention your name in our comment section. Please do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until our next episode, stay healthy, stay, enjoy the summer. We'll talk to you on our next episode. Until then, bye-bye.